Welcome everyone. Welcome to this class on Blossoming Open. Thank you for joining me today. Before we begin, I'd like to give you a few little tips that you can use to, um, to have better success in this lecture. So one, have a notepad and a pen because you're going to want to take notes. So if I say something that you really... Um, resonate with or it really excites you write it down and then when you go back to your notes you'll know exactly what you need to go into further because that's where your interests lie secondly turn off all the notifications on your devices you don't want to be um disturbed and thirdly we will begin with a pranayama to help us center so how you're sitting does matter you want to be grounded. So find a comfortable place to sit. You can be in a chair, I'm in a chair and my feet are fully grounded on the earth. Or you can be, if you're on your bed or on the floor, just make sure you're comfortable and your spine is nice and straight. We'll begin with some, it's called straw breathing. It's also called quantum breathing, but we're gonna inhale with our nose and then we're going to exhale with our mouth and when you exhale you're going to make a little sound like Ooh. you're not going to make that externally you're just going to make it in your mind so it's like you're almost saying who okay and we're going to do that about five times and it's just a beautiful way to center us so we really arrive at this this class if you like this chat with um with the right energy so sitting up nice and tall just taking a moment to make that transition from all the external noise and becoming more centered okay so you're going to take a big inhale with your nose if you do have a cold or your nose is blocked the second option would be your mouth. But ideally, we're gonna do a big inhale with the nose. Begin. Inhale with your nose, taking as much breath as you can, and then pause it very slightly. And now exhale through pursed lips as if you are making the sound who. Keep going, keep exhaling all the way out. Let's do that four more times. So take a big inhale with your nose. Feel the breath expanding the chest cavity and the diaphragm and the lungs. And then pause very briefly without any kind of strain. And now exhale through pursed lips, imagining that you're saying, who three more inhaling you can feel the prana the breath the life force filling your diaphragm your lungs everything is expanding and then as you exhale through your lips can you contract and pull in the pelvic floor and the abdomen in and up and notice how that assists you in pushing out the respiration, the breath. Two more, inhale. Exhaling. Last one, inhaling. And exhaling. And now relax, just sit quietly for a moment.
And then bring your hands into the Anjali Mudra, with the palms touching. And we'll just say a collective prayer. May we all have success in our spiritual endeavors. And may we all find a deep connection with the heart and the light that allows us to keep moving forward in the right direction for us and for everyone around us. May our spiritual endeavors not only benefit us greatly, but also benefit everyone and everything around us. May we do the work to keep opening our hearts so that we can touch the heart of others. May we remember that this practice is not a selfish practice. We do this work not only so we can connect with our greatest potential, but also to serve others. And then just bring your prayer to your third eye. And just with the nose, unless you have a cold in which you're using your mouth as a second option, take an inhale with your nose and an exhale with your nose. And then release the hands down. So welcome everyone. I wanted to give you a little heart chat about blossoming open. So let's use the metaphor of a flower. So in your mind's eye, just imagine a fully formed flower. It has the roots, the stem, the buds, and then the flower that has formed. But for all that to happen, there had to be a process, a seed, a germination process, and then a growing process. And that is very much like the yoga and tantric approach to life. So why does the flower bloom? Why does it bother? Why does that happen? Well, one, because there is obviously a life force making it happen. And you might think of this in yoga or tantra as shakti. You can also think of it as prana, which is the life force energy that sustains us. But shakti is more than that. Shakti is the energy of creation. So the energy of creation is obviously in the seed and then the flower blossoms. So that's one reason why it happens. But the other reason is because for the flower to blossom, that is its full potential. Its full potential isn't to grow a little bit. Its full potential isn't to grow halfway. Its full potential isn't to grow a little bit and then break off and be <laughs> like a broken flower. Its full potential is to grow into a beautiful flower with lots of petals. And you know that some flowers reach their full potential. You've probably enjoyed so many of them, but you also know you can just walk down the street if you are living near um, a place that has flowers. Some flowers don't, some flowers don't have the right nourishment they don't have the right conditions and then also then you know this there's, there's natural um occurrences that happen like storms or um intense weather very hot very wet so it's obvious that this flower to fully reach its full potential needs the correct environment now let's use the metaphor of the flower to look at our journey. 
So what is our full potential? Why does that sometime not, sometimes not happen? And why do we want it to happen? Well, just like um, the flower, you two are imbued with Shakti, the source of creation, and you also have life force. However, unlike the flower, you are the pinnacle of human creation, if you like. The human is the pinnacle, sorry, not the pinnacle of human creation, the pinnacle of all creation. So if you think about it, when you're a fetus and you're in your mother's womb, the heart is developed very quickly, um, say around 18 weeks. And the heart in these initial stages is like a fish. Um, and then after a little while, the heart grows a little bit more and the heart is like the heart of a frog. And then after that, the heart grows a little bit more and then the heart is like a snake until eventually you have a human heart. So you can see how the creation within the fetus, the human fetus is an evolution. And you, you as a human being are the pinnacle of that end of evolution. So if you just take a moment to think about that and maybe write down in your notebook, um, I am the pinnacle of human creation because that's empowering and that's a beautiful thing to know, to understand and to appreciate. Of course, it's not saying that any other living being like a frog or a fish or a snake is not important because it is. The yoga tradition teaches us that all living beings are equally important and they should all be respected. But you have in terms of evolution and creation, you are the pinnacle. So you have, you know, a nervous system, you have a chakra system, you have a subtle body, you have a mind, um, you have consciousness um, at a higher level than the other um, animals. Okay, so you've written that down. I am the pinnacle of creation as a human being. The next thing I'd like you to write down in your notebook is, what is my full potential? What is my full potential? Some people get really scared at that question because they think, oh my goodness, what happens if I don't live to my full potential? Well, nothing bad's gonna happen, but you might feel unfulfilled. So it would be fair to say that it's worth having a shot at living life to your full potential. And I feel like even if you just give it a good shot, so you try, or you even realize that you have a full potential and you move in that direction, that your heart really appreciates that and your soul. So before you, before anything happened, like, you were a fetus so before you were a fetus you know two sperms came together they had to before that they had to swim against all the other sorry a sperm and an egg came together and before that the sperm had to swim against all the other millions of sperms you know and then before that your parents um had to meet and maybe fall in love and and before that, and before that, and before that. So before you came into existence, there was only one thing really, and that is consciousness. Maybe you might think of that as soul, awareness. That has always been there. Okay. So now we've brought into our consciousness that you have a full potential just like the flower, how are you gonna bloom? How are you going to bloom? The yoga tradition teaches us that we can fulfill our full potential, that we have a divine spark, as we've just spoken about, this Shakti, this Prana, this life force. And the difference between 
not realizing your full potential and realizing it is this sense of fulfillment, of joy, of peace, of contentment. And the yoga tradition teaches us very clearly, there's no questions asked, that your innate, so that means your, your natural is just inbred within you. Your innate, innate, innate state is actually one of joy, one of love and one of bliss. But obviously you come into this human body and you have this entire experience and you know all those innate qualities they get they don't ever go away they never go away they can't go away because just like the seed just like the flower that's in you that's in your makeup that's in your dna that's in the source of creation which is within you so they never go away no matter how hard things get but the yoga tradition talks about veils so i mean i don't know if english is your first language but a veil in english is kind of like what a bride way bride wears to hide a face when she gets married um so you can think of it the yoga tradition describes them as like black veils like lots of veils and you know that could be a trauma that happened in your childhood one veil um a heartbreak another veil um anxiety another veil addiction another veil you know they come they come and they come and boy do they build up they build up massively until you've actually forgotten what your innate um potentiality is your innate joy but all is not lost like I just said it's always there but you've got to want to find it so you probably want to find it or you probably have found it or you wouldn't be listening to this video and you probably wouldn't be going to yoga and you most certainly wouldn't be doing yoga with me because my yoga is very much um, um, well, it's very focused on this um, blossoming into your full potential rather than it just being a physical thing. Okay, so we're at the point where we want to get rid of the veils you know you might not get rid of them um forever but you can kind of like do the work to wipe them away and let yourself shine through um every now and then that would be a good start wouldn't it so we know that we want that we want that we want our innate joy love peace and bliss to shine through because that is our full potential. So I feel like people get really stuck and thinking, oh my God, I've got to fulfill my full potential. So, you know, I'm going to have to be really good at this or I'm going to have to be the best at this. Um, I just watched the new Netflix um, series about David Beckham and it, it was really good actually. Um, and he obviously was like one of the world's best football players of all time and the series is so good because you see him as a little boy um obsessed with football playing non-stop when it was raining he would just draw pictures of him winning the world cup and you know it, it was just beautiful to watch a human being who has fulfilled and blossomed into their full potential However, I think we've all got to realise that we, we don't all have to be like, you know, a superstar and the best at this and the best at this. Your full potential, remember, is touching your innate qualities. So joy, love, peace, contentment. OK, so what does the, how does the yoga tradition teach you to get there? Obviously, there's loads of technologies. So you know when you come into a class and you do pranayama you're touching the subtle body and the chakras and the asana is also touching those things the mantra the mudra um everything and then the kundalini energy which is this um source energy this divine energy is rising and little by little year after year you might feel a little bit more like yourself remembering who you really were when you were born or in the bosom of creation herself but I can tell you 
that if you're worried about what you're doing day to day, one thing that the tradition teaches us is that you should be serving others. Find something that you can feel content and passionate about that isn't just for yourself, that also gives to others. What could that be? What could that be? Maybe it's teaching yoga. Maybe it's playing with your children. Maybe it's teaching children how to play a musical instrument. Maybe it has nothing to do with children because you don't like them. <laughs> Maybe it's um, skateboarding. Maybe it's surfing. But once you find your passion and what you love, some people feel frustrated because they can't do that as a full-time job or they can't make it into a business. But why don't you share it with somebody else? You know, you could even just set up a free a free community group. You know, I'll teach you how to do this surfing technique um, or I'll teach you how to do a jump on a skateboard. I'm making things up because I don't actually know the terminology of those things. But you have to realize your full potential, like the flower. To really realize your full potential, you have to wipe the veils away. To do that, have your physical practice. So have your pranayamas, your asanas, your mudras, your mantras, your meditations, your yoga nidras. But also I feel like the missing piece, the real missing piece is find your passion and share it, share it. So I'd like to close this class just by saying I teach Tantra Vinyasa Flow every Friday at six o'clock here in Ghetto in Las Arenas. If you want to learn more about Tantra, which is the spiritual science of allowing you to blossom, then please come along to a class. Anyone is welcome. Um, also, if you can't make it in person because you're not in the country, you can hang and you can sign up for online class or you can also go to my YouTube channel, Cat Webster Yoga, um, and practice with me there. Comment in the comments below what you think about realizing your full potential. Are you there yet? Are you on the path? Got any tips for anyone else? And that's it really. So just remember, you have potential to fulfill and you are the pinnacle of human creation. You are full of divinity and you are full of light sending you all my love on this beautiful sunny day 6th of October 2023 on the rooftop at La Casa del Yoga and you can just see the Puente Golgante in the background it's not the Eiffel Tower however it was actually the disciples who of the, anyway it has something to do with the Eiffel Tower the same kind of people okay that's enough take care goodbye